Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me uh, for the seminar talk at KIAS. Uh, until very recently, I stayed in one of the uh, epicenters of pandemic in Europe, and this is Germany. And now I am in Kanazawa and feel very safe because there are, uh, you know, at the moment only one or two new infections a day in the city. Okay, so almost I think exactly uh, seven years ago, uh, it, is, it was 2013, I gave a talk uh, on a similar subject in a workshop at KIAS, which was organized by Kosan. Uh, yes, it was 2013, and when I, when I started to be interested in scale invariant extension of the standard model, and uh, I was also very much impressed by the paper by Kosan and with his collaborators, uh, Usan, Yungsan, and Disan. Since then, I am, yes, I am very much interested in scale invariant extension of the standard model and also Einstein theory of gravity. Uh, yes, um, I am therefore very pleased to deliver some recent uh, result on this subject which are obtained uh, with my collaborators here. Uh, half of them are in Kanazawa, the other half of them are at the Max Planck Institute, Heidelberg. Yes, I retired 2018 from Kanazawa University. Uh, Toyama University is, yes, a kind of my administrative university for me. So half of the year I spend in Japan and the other half of the year I spend in Germany. Okay, let me start now. So I start with a very famous program. This is a hierarchy program. And as I understand, there is no unique definition of the program. So this is my definition. The problem is that there are so much different energy scales in particle physics, including cosmology, as you see here. And we do not know why. There is a related problem called naturalism problem, which has also a, a subjective character. So for me, um, this is a problem whether it is possible to realize such different energy scales without fine tuning of the parameters. Okay. This is a very difficult problem. And as I understand, there is no, so far, no satisfactory solution. Okay, but I would like to look, uh, I would, let me put uh, these problems aside, okay. And I would look at this problem from a, a different aspect and ask myself what the origin of these scales is. Maybe we can find in this way a route to the solution, maybe. Clearly, if we start with a theory containing a mass parameter or a massive parameters, we have no chance to explain its origin. Therefore, the starting Lagrangian should not contain any dimension for parameters. This leads me to the idea of scale invariant extension of the standard model and also Einstein's theory of gravity. But you may say scale invariance is broken by scale anom anomaly. And so there is usually a scale at the quantum level anyway. Yes, this is true. Uh, scale invariance is usually hardly broken by anomaly and the normalization scale has to be introduced at the quantum level. Consequently, uh, parameters are running with this scale and scaling dimension is modified. However, there is one important fact to be added. Now, scale anomaly cannot directly generate mass, or better said, a mass gap. In this context, I would like to mention the old work by Lovenstein and Zimmerman 
to rigorously prove the existence, perturbative existence of massless factor of force theory. This was 1976 or so. The third one is a key for softening the natural problem. As Badi noticed, maybe you know, that the standard model does not by itself has a fine tuning problem if there's no intermediate scale between the standard model and the Planck scales. Or put it another way, the contribution to the Higgs mass from anomaly is not quadratic, it's at most logarithmic. That is important. Sometimes this is misunderstood. So, motivations. Yes, before I come to discuss how to break scale invariance spontaneously, I would like to give some motivations to the scale invariant extension of the standard model and uh, Einstein's theory of gravity. Okay. The first one is the fact that there is only one dimension, dimensionful parameter in each case, if we neglect the cosmological constant, of course, the Higgs max term parameter in the standard model and the Planck scale in the Einstein theory. If there were many, we would anyway wonder why we should not unify them and ask what is the origin of this unified scale is. Okay. So in fact, Coleman and Weinbach, Weinbach considered the standard model in the limit as the Higgs mass parameter mu h goes to zero. They found that the Higgs potential of the tree level can be modified such a way, if of course the top mass is neglected, that the position of the minimum changes to a finite value. That is, the electroweak gauge symmetry can be spontaneously broken as a consequence of scale anomaly. If the top mass is not neglected, the electroweak gauge symmetry cannot be spontaneously broken. This example shows it clearly that the scale anomaly does not automatically generate a mass gap. Um, Einstein's theory of gravity is much older than the standard model. Therefore, the idea to generate the Planck scale dynamically is also very old. These are old references, maybe there are more. Uh, yes, I am not going to discuss them. If you are interested in the old papers, please look at these papers. There are also new papers, uh, yes on this subject, but they are not cited here, sorry. The second motivation is this. This is related to what Badin said. This graph shows the behavior of the Higgs quartic coupling at the Planck scale, depending on the Higgs mass and the top mass. You may have seen similar graphs elsewhere. I took this uh, from this paper, this is my collaborator. Um, for instance, this blue band, this shows the region in which the quartic Higgs coupling vanishes at the Planck scale. Uh, in the green area here, the beta function of the quartic Higgs coupling also vanishes at the Planck scale and so on. The, Physical point is here, okay? Uh, when this picture was uh, given, there was no uh, Higgs. Uh, so the people did not know where the Higgs mass is, but now we know the Higgs mass and top mass is here. Um, and this, <coughs> this result said the standard model remains perturbative until the Planck scale, okay? Put it another way. Scale invariance is broken in the standard model by anomaly all the way to the Planck scale, only by anomaly, except the soft breaking 
the Higgs mass by X mass itself. This is the third motivation. What you see here is a temperature fluctuation of uh, cosmic microwave background measured at Planck. You may wonder why this has something to do with uh, scale invariant extension of Einstein gravity. Okay, this is the video. Yes, <laughs> I took from the Planck website the CMB consists of electromagnetic waves, and so they are polarized. What you see here is the polarization fluctuations. The background here is the temperature fluctuations with less sensitivity. Since the polarization has a direction, you can associate a polarization fluctuation with a vector field. The vector field, field can be divided in two classes, okay? the so-called B mode and E mode, like the rotation-free electric field and the divergence-free magnetic field. The B mode exists because the space-time metric is a tensor. So the B mode originates from the tensor fluctuations of the metric. It is this B mode that may give us an evidence that Einstein's theory should be extended in a scale invariant fashion. Now, this is a constraint by Planck in the plane of the scalar spectral index and the tensor to scalar ratio, which you may have seen many times. These parameters can be predicted from inflation models. The very small tensor to scalar ratio is predicted here by the so-called R-square inflation, where the Higgs inflation basically predicts the same uh, solar parameters. According to Planck, these models are the best candidate. So why this has something to do with the scale invariant extension of Einstein gravity? Let me explain it briefly. Here is a Lagrangian of these two models. The first term here, this is Einstein Hilbert term, which breaks scale invariance. The second term here is a scale invariant because our rich scalar has a dimension two. And also this term, this is a non-minimal coupling in the Higgs inflation is also scale invariant. And in the Higgs inflation, Higgs play the role of inflaton. And in R square inflation, there is a scalar degrees of, degrees of freedom called scalaron, which is present because of the higher deriv derivative terms in R square. And this is the inflaton in the Higgs infla uh, R square inflation. The Lagrangian written here is in the so-called Jordan frame. But <clears throat> the so-called slow roll picture is given in the Einstein frame usually. So you go from the Jordan frame to the Einstein frame. Yes, it, this is a potential in the Einstein frame. It is very flat, super flat, I said. Super flat for large value, values of inflaton field. In fact, this super flatness appears if the non-invariant Einstein term here can be neglected against the scale invariant terms here. Note that the tensor to scalar ratio is exactly proportional to the gradient. So therefore, in the exact, if it is exactly flat, tensor to scalar ratio is zero. Therefore, the smallness of, of the tensor to scalar ratio may indicate a scale invariant extension of the Einstein theory of gravity. Okay. Uh, Kubo Sang? Yes. I have one question. In the previous slide. Yes. Uh, so you include the gamma R scale term, but the, you don't consider R mu scale or Gauss bonnet term? 
Ramadan is is uh, uh, first of all, this is Safistan, but this is you know this is not my mother. Mm. It is a mother our inflation, our school inflation, and the. Uh, oh, uh, okay, 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 I see. Yeah. Okay, these are cited here. Oh uh, yes. Okay. Mm. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yes. That has a question. Um, uh, would you uh, explain a bit, a bit more on in what sense you say this is a scale invariant? Because um, is that uh, you you say that it's invariant under certain specific transformation, like a conformal transformation? What is the I, don't, scale I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Scale transformation. Scale means that a dilatation. Yes. So usually, uh, if you if you have a Lagrangian which does not have a mass parameter, it is scaling invariant usually. Uh, well, maybe there there is some subtlety because if you uh, just scaling the metric, the um, you get uh, a trace of energy moment and tensor which doesn't vanish if there is a potential for scalar, right? Yes. Th therefore, scale classically scaling invariant, not at the quantum level. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I, no I, I'm saying it's completely at a tree level, the classical level. And mm -hmm. I see that uh, in a Higgs inflation. Yes. So uh, I'm just curious uh, that there is a Higgs potential. Yeah, of course, there is a Higgs mass parameter here, but I am assuming this is very small. Okay. Anyway, mm -hmm. in, the, in the Higgs inflation, mm -hmm. the scale invariance is broken by the Einstein term. I'm just saying this is an indication. The super flatness comes from this non, uh, from this scale invariant uh, operators. And so, here, mm -hmm. this, this area, in this area, the scale invariance is more dominant. This is what I'm saying. So it's not completely scale invariant, but- uh, This theory is not completely scale invariant. First mm -hmm. of all, in the Higgs inflation, Higgs mass breaks scale invariance. The second of all, Einstein term breaks scale invariance. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, aquatic term, uh, did, did you say that it's a. It's this term is scale invariant, yes. Higgs quatic term. Yes. I, I, I see that Higgs quatic term there. Higgs quatic term is a scale invariant. Um, Only Higgs mass term violates scale invariance. Maybe okay. there's. Well. Um, so if you think of the uh, uh, genuinely uh, scale transformation, I mean, just a, a, just a scaling, overall scaling on a metric, you get uh, at, at the trace of energy momentum tensor, right? Because it's uh, just a scaling, so the overall, well, it's a sort of conformal transformation. Symmetric uh, doesn't change except the overall scale. Uh, Matrix likes a scalar, yes. And then the if you have a complete scale invariance. So what is the scale there? So if you compute the, the trace of the energy momentum tensor, you said there's a scale. What is the scale? Where is the scale? Where is the scale? Where is the scale? I'm saying the dilatation, just a dilatation. The where the scale? It's a arbitrarily well, just a um, just a um, well, we don't have a scale. Well, well, my point is that uh, um, the 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 complete scale invariance requires a vanishing trace of energy momentum tensor. Yeah, this is true. But if you have a quadratic Higgs term. Yeah. The trace of the energy momentum tensor of Higgs field doesn't vanish. I don't think so. It vanishes. You mean in the in the uh, in the flat space it too, in the non-flat space. Uh, in flat space. But I don't think so. It is exactly zero. Um, so you, of course, you have to use the equation of motion. Then the trace of the energy momentum tensor is zero. This quadratic coupling does not contribute. I would say, but we can discuss later, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, all right, Let yeah. Let me continue. Thank you very much yeah. for that question. So I was here. Okay. So I 
now come closer to my uh, main topics today. So how to break uh, scale invariance spontaneously. Obviously, there are two uh, ways. One is a non-perturbative scenario, and the other one is a perturbative scenario. Okay. Now, I told you already, since a uh, uh, column by max scenario does not work within the standard model, standard model has to be extended to apply this idea. There are uh, many activities, there have been many activities, and this is one of the old partial list of references. And uh, yes, this last paper, this is quite new, had a lot of references. So if you are interested in old papers and new papers, you can please look at this uh, uh, paper. Maybe you can see it here on the online. Okay. Okay. So I'm talking about a non perturbative scenario. So this is a list of uh, also partial uh, list of the non perturbative scenario. The originally it was introduced, yes, uh, by these people for technical model. In the technical model, as you know, there uh, is no scalar because people did not, did not like scalar. However, um, these models have a big problem. This is a flavor changing neutral current problem and uh, except few models and uh, these models, I, I would say, are basically uh, dead. Okay. Now, I think uh, the model introduced by Kosan by these people is the first one in which uh, the scalar was there. And also the fermions in the hidden sector are uh, standard model singlet. Therefore, there is no flavor changing neutral current problem. So this is a paper that impressed me a lot in 2013, much later than the paper. And uh, I uh, started to work on this, uh, yes, on this project. There are also new papers, but also new, 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 new papers are cited by Jungsan et al. paper here, if you look at. Okay. As you know, 98% um, of the proton mass is uh, produced by the non perturbative effect in QCD. It is a chiral condensate that breaks chiral symmetry and at the same time um, breaks scale invariance and generate a robust energy scale. This chiral condensate is a web of uh, fermion bilinear, but you can imagine there is a condensate of scalar bilinear, which can be formed uh, by strong dynamics in non abelian gauge theories and it can also generate a robust energy scale as well. But this is a non perturbative effect. So how to deal with? There are basically two approaches. One is direct approach. Uh, for instance, lattice gauge theory, for which you have to have uh, certain computer power. And the other one is the effective field theory approach. Here I will use elect, elect effective uh, field theory approach. In the case of dynamical chiral symmetry breaking, there are also various choices, but here I will use the number yona rashina model. So in what follows, I would like to recall the basic feature of the number yona rashina model. Uh, I think many particle physicists are not familiar with uh, number yona rashina of course, everybody knows that number, as you know, but uh, to work, uh, yes, more hadron physics, hadron people are working with number uh, uh, no So let me um, recall the basic feature of the model. Okay. So this is a QCD Lagrangian with n massless uh, fermions. So this uh, condensate, chiral condensate is very important. This breaks chiral symmetry and also this is responsible for the hadron mass. And effective theory for this chiral condensate is a non-bionarashina model. This is written here. 
in this model, there is no gluons. Gluons are integrated out. It consists only of fermions with four and six fermion interactions. Okay. Uh, chiral condensate in QCD is an ordered parameter for a chiral symmetry breaking. It is even, even an exact order parameter in if the mass of the fermion vanishes. Therefore, we may regard uh, the number of national model as an effective theory for this order parameter. Therefore, global symmetries play an important role for a number of national model to be successful. So what is the global symmetry of the QCD? At the classical level, we have SU3 times SU3 chiral symmetry and U1 times U1 axial for QCD. And uh, for the number of national model, we have SU3 times SU3 chiral symmetry and U1 times Z6 if you have six Fermi interactions. Now at the quantum level, because of the anomaly, chiral anomaly, U1 actually is broken down to its subgroup Z6. These two Z6 are the same. Furthermore, SU3 times SU3 chiral symmetry is dynamically broken down to its subgroup SU3. So finally, we have the exact global symmetry SU3 times U1 times Z6 for both theories. Therefore, the both theories have exactly the same global symmetry. So the symmetry is, right, The symmetry is, of course, a formal aspect. And uh, now, how to compute the dynamical chiral symmetry breaking in the number of Rational model? Yes, the model was uh, proposed 1961, and uh, it is almost six year, 60 years old. So since then, there are many, many, uh, infinitely many papers on this subject. Here, I use the so-called self-consistent mean field approximation which has been developed by Hatsuda-san and Kunihiro-san many, many years ago. They are Hadron physicists. Uh, yes, I am not going to uh, go to into details. Um, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, if you are interested in this uh, method, you can look at this review paper. Okay, but this is very powerful approximation. Okay. Anyway, uh, in the mean field approximation, or self-consistent mean field approximation, uh, the Lagrangian here is written, uh, it contains the mean field and uh, constituent fermions, okay? Sigma is a mean field for the chiral condensate and phi is a mean field for mesons. M is not really the mass, but if sigma gets web, then we have a mass. And this is chiral symmetry breaking. And therefore, this fermion is called uh, not the current fermion, this is a constituent fermion. And G is a uh, coupling constant for the fourth fermion, and G D uh, is here, is a, a coupling constant for six fermion interactions. Okay. Now, to uh, compute the vacuum expectation value of sigma, I have to have a potential. And you can get the potential by integrating out to the fermions. And this potential looks like this. For these parameters, they are very close to the real values or realistic values. Now you see the minimum is changed to here and the sigma got no vanishing vacuum expectation value which means the chiral symmetry is broken in this picture. Okay. In the uh, realistic number of national model, which means realistic for hadrons, there are five parameters. 
So far, I said uh, there is no uh, current quark masses, but uh, uh, in the realistic model, I have to introduce current quark masses, and two of them, and uh, because I assume there's two isospin, and then there's a cutoff and the uh, uh, coupling constant for four Fermi and uh, six Fermi. If you use these values and compute uh, meson masses and also decay constant, you get these numbers. And if you compare with experimental numbers, you see that uh, the number generation model is very good. Uh, yes, very good to describe uh, property of mesons. And moreover, uh, the important relation in hadron physics is this Goldberger Triman relation and also uh, Gelman Ocas Rena relations are very uh, well satisfied. You can also study the chiral phase transition at finite temperature. The nature of uh, the chiral phase transition uh, depends on the size of the current quark masses and uh, which is illustrated here in the Columbia plot. Maybe you have seen also many times. The physical point is here, therefore there is no real phase transition in QCD. Uh, it looks like this, these blue lines. This is called um, crossover phase transition, okay? With a temperature of about uh, 130 MeV. This you can get also from the number of national model. But you can also study the phase transition uh, for the massless case. This is a red line here. This line, the temperature, and this is chiral condensate. And you see the chiral phase transition is the first of the phase transition. Note that in, in large scale theory, you cannot have massless limit. There's no simulation with massless quarks. Uh, number of rational model, does not know the confinement, right? But there is a phenomenological way to introduce the effect of the confinement. It's called P and JL, introduced by Fukushima-san many, many years ago. Then you can also compute the uh, uh, critical temperature for the chiral phase transition, turns out to be 120 MVV. There are also new simulations, as I I told you simulation at this point is impossible, but there are simulations very close to this line. This is a line, uh, this this twinish uh, area of first phase, first, first order phase transition and crossover. And this simulation indicate that uh, the, the critical temperature uh, for the massless case is something like 134 MVV. So what you see is the number of rational model is not very bad. Now I come to the effective theory for the condensate of scalar bilinear. Here, this is the Lagrangian, which I consider. Um, I, uh, S is a complex scalar in the fundamental representation of uh, SU and color, and I introduce NFS, so I assume uh, U and a flavor symmetry in this case. And, uh, this model, especially for SU2, has been uh, discussed in the past more rigorously. And maybe you remember they proved uh, there is no uh, strict um, distinction between the phase, uh, Higgs phase and confinement phase. Uh, but this does not mean, so that, that, that means there is no uh, really uh, exact order parameter for this condensation, but this does not mean there is no uh, 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 confinement phase. Uh, for instance, the water and gas phases, for instance, can clearly be uh, se separated, you know, at one TM as we see. But above 218 uh, ATM, uh, there will be no strict distinction. So here I assume. Uh, this S, the scalar complex, uh, complex scalar is in the confinement phase. So how to obtain the effective theory? Then I uh, remember how I got the effective theory for NGL 
So I remember why MDL was so uh, successful. So I just name it. Okay. So do you remember that the global symmetry? First of all, uh, there is no gauge field in the NGL. So we integrate out the NGL, which means there is no uh, gauge field in the effective, effective theory. Then we remember the global symmetries are very important. This was a global symmetry at the classical level in the case of NGL. And here in the scalar theory, we have UN flavor symmetry times scale invariance at the classical level. And the scale invariance is anomalous, while U and Axel was anomalous in the case of MJ, in the case of QCD. Then I use a mean field approximation. So the chiral bilinear uh, is replaced by mean field. Uh, sigma is without gamma five and pi is with gamma. Similarly, S dagger S is replaced in the mean field approximation F this is a diagonal part of S uh, plus this non-diagonal part, which I call, uh, what I call it, phi. Now uh, you remember to get the effective potential from which I get the vacuum expectation value of sigma, I integrated out psi. So in the scalar case, I integrate out the fluctuation of S and S bar in, the ba in some background. Then you get the potential. So this is the potential. Uh, yes, for this value of the parameters. As you see uh, here, uh, we have um, yeah, a web of F, which means that uh, uh, this uh, scalar bilinear is formed, which means the uh, scale invariance is broken by this condensation. Okay. So you can also study the final temperature. And uh, here is uh, uh, condensate against the temperature. You see uh, the, the scale phase transition is also of first order. And this is a potential near on at the uh, critical temperature. So you see clearly that the current uh, scale phase transition in this case is first order. First order. Okay, so far I discussed how to break scale invariance non-perturbatively using effective theories. Now I come to the uh, applications. As you can imagine from previous discussions, there are two types of models. One is based on the chiral condensate, uh, which occurs in non-abelian gauge theory like QCD. And the other one is based on the condensate of uh, scalar bilinear. So these models are so constructed, constructed that the chiral condensates appear in the hidden sector. And the scale created there is transferred to the standard model sector. By a uh, standard model singlet, this is S, in the case of the fermionic case, and uh, uh, in the case of the bosonic case, uh, in, the, yes, in the bosonic case, there is no uh, mediator. This is because of the uh, higgs boltzmann coupling. So this is the higgs boltzmann coupling, and this is also higgs boltzmann coupling. So his higgs boltzmann coupling is a window to the hidden sector from the standard model scene. Note that the lightest bound state in the hidden sector at dark matter. This is because you can see here. Uh, if, for instance, in this case, U C, so diagonal diagonal U C is intact, this pi is stable, okay. And also this phi is stable if UN is not broken. So there are automatically dark matter candidates in these models. So these have been studied already in many, many years, and I'm not going to discuss, but uh, I just would like to mention uh, 
that the gravitational uh, waves produced at the fi fi uh, first phase transition in the fermionic model uh, was reanalyzed. There were some problems, and uh, you may look at um, this paper for details. Now, now I come to another uh, application for the fermionic model first. Yes. The scale of the hidden sector of the Korea model, I said the Korea model, is of the order of few TeV. Now I would like to uh, present a possibility that the scale of the model can be much higher than few TeV, even higher than, than 10 to 10 GeV. The corresponding dark matter can be as uh, heavy as 10 to 9 GeV. This has become possible if we uh, embed the idea of the so-called neutrino option, uh, yes, into the model. But since I think I have uh, not many times, I would like to skip, you can uh, look at this paper and uh, it, yes, you can embed this idea into the uh, fermionic model, then uh, you can have a dark matter and so on and so on. It is straightforward, okay? So I, Skip it. Now I uh, come to the application of this uh, scalar condensation. Uh, yes. I come back to the, the, the gravity theory. So as I uh, said, uh, uh, Curvature scale has a dimension two. Uh, you can write down such a uh, scale invariant Lagrangian, including this um, scalars. Okay, so this is the non linear coupling you have seen already in the Higgs potential, X inflation. This is R square is also a uh, scale invariant. And the W, this is a uh, so called wild tensor. Wild tensor square is also possible. Uh, it's Gauss Bonnet term is suppressed because it's, it is a surface term and the uh, gauge part. Yes, this is the most general uh, Lagrangian and uh, general invariance and the SU and local gauge invariance and classical scale invariance. As you see, if uh, the scalar, by the scalar condensate, this becomes a massive parameter, then you can generate the Planck scale in this way. There are many similar ideas also uh, Korean people are working on the subject uh, here. <clears throat> yes, this is the relation between the uh, condensate and the Planck scale. This Planck uh, scale is a reduced Planck scale. Uh, in addition, there is a byte product. I did not maybe see, say it uh, when I discuss here. This F is a diagonal part of this condensate and if you get the vacuum expectation value, our scale invariance is broken. But however, there is also uh, uh, excitations above this condensate. This is a dilaton. Okay. There is also excitation of sigma, and this is a real sigma, which is a physical particle. So this is in this case, this is also in this case, a dilaton, in this case is a dilaton. So we have a dilaton particle in this model. On this dilaton may play the role of inflation. Once again, this is a Lagrangian, but uh, to discuss inflation, we suppress this uh, wild tensor square term. Then we go to the effective theory description, which means this is a gauge theory part, but we replace by the effective theory. This is here. Uh, the difference is that uh, uh, because we are integrating out to the fluctuation. So the quadratic term is very important. Uh, we have a curvature here in the quadratic term. Then we integrate out to the uh, fluctuation of the complex S to get the potential. Okay. I don't have to uh, show you the potential. Potential is basically the same. And then the new thing is, is that uh, I also thought there is a, a scalar degree, degrees of freedom in R square 
because it is a, a higher derivative, it's called scalarone. So we have Dilaton and scalarone in this uh, model. So there are two scalars. One is Dilaton, uh, I call it now chi. Sometimes I call it a sigma, but it's called now uh, chi is basically the same thing. And the phi is, is uh, the propagating uh, scalar degrees of freedom, it's called scalar. And if you look at the potential, potential uh, depends now on chi and phi, you find there is a valley structure line. So we assume that the inflaton uh, rolls down slowly along this valley bottom. So therefore, effectively, we have one single field system. Okay. Uh, this is a potential uh, line for the potential for the benchmark point here uh, of the parameter space. We have a one, two, three, four parameters in the theory. There are only four parameters. Beta is a coupling constant for a non-minimal here, coupling. And uh, uh, well, this is just, a, uh, just to, to show the uh, benchmark point. So gamma is a, is a, a coefficient uh, in front of the R square, basically. And uh, lambda is a, uh, yes, here the, uh, the quartic potential. And uh, this big lambda is a cutoff. Not exactly the cutoff, this is the scale introduced in the effective theory. Effective theory is normalizable and uh, break scale invariance, therefore this is basically the normalization scale. So for these parameters, you can compute the equipotential lines. And uh, uh, as I told you, that the inflaton rolls down slowly along the bottom. Okay. You can also compute uh, the potential here. Uh, this is the potential in the Einstein frame. You see once again that this is very flat. Okay. So this is flatness is realized in this uh, model too. So as I told you, there are four parameters, and uh, if you fix the Planck scale, okay, the Planck scale is 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 not a free parameter. We have we have a, no Planck scale at the beginning, so we have to uh, fix the Planck scales, which for which you need one parameter, and we also uh, have to, we fix the uh, so, so called um, uh, scalar spectrum amplitude. Then there are two parameters left and then you can predict a line in this uh, plane. This is the plane of uh, scalar power spectrum and the tensor to scalar ratio. And these orange lines are predictions. And the, the, the colored areas are constrained by Planck. Now you see that our predictions, or there are regions of the prediction that is consistent with a Planck constraint, okay? Okay, now uh, this is basically is almost the last uh, slide. Uh, there is a project in Japan, it's called Light Pod. Uh, it's going to uh, measure the tensor to scalar ratio to this order. So it, 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 it works, uh, it may confirm our prediction. Okay, now this is the conclusion. So scale invariant extension of the standard model may provide a solution to the fine tuning problem uh, because quantum corrections are at most logarithmic. So there are good reasons for scale invariant extension of the standard model and Einstein's theory of gravity. This does not mean that we have solved the problem. There is a problem, namely hierarchy of dimensionless parameters somehow needed, sometimes needed, uh, to explain original mass hierarchy. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for a nice talk. So, any question? Yeah. Uh, yes. So, uh, the so in the uh, your uh, M Planck uh, generation, uh, 
if if you you are assuming a kind of a confining gauge theory in the sort of a hidden sector, right? Yes, with, yes, yes. with the scalar, uh, and then uh, and when the, you have SWS, this is from condensation. Yes. And oh, I see. And there, are, of course, as I told at the beginning, there are many ways to break scale invariance. For instance, mm -hmm. Coleman Weinberg, and there mm -hmm. are models with Coleman Weinberg. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this I have not seen yet, but fermionic model can be also used. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we are working on this, and also mm -hmm. working uh, uh, with the Coleman Weinberg. But uh, yes, this is already published. So. I'm presenting this, but there are various possibilities. Mm. But it looks, I don't know, I, I, I am allowed to say this. <laughs> Any models, so there are three different models, they are somehow predicting very similar values like this uh, here. Mm -hmm. But I don't know why. Maybe mean, there is some reason, yes. You mean as long as you assume uh, Classical scale invariance. Yeah. Then, then you, yeah, you three types of model means a uh, uh, scalar or fermion or what, what is the other sort? Uh, yes. Number Coleman Weinberg. Coleman ah, Weinberg. Sorry. Okay, and, okay. Yes. Yeah, Coleman Weinberg. And of course, I have to say uh, there are similar calculations mm -hmm. and uh, especially using Coleman Weinberg. But I have to say that we are calculating the potential in the Jordan frame before we go to the Einstein frame. Mm -hmm. But so far there are approaches in which they first go to the Einstein frame and then calculation of common member. In that case, the prediction, prediction is not the same. Yes, yes. Is predictions are somehow shifted to the left, mm -hmm. almost outside of the, of the constraint. So the, Yes. I don't know which is better, which is, which is not better, but as far as terminology is concerned, this one is better. <laughs> so which frame is, uh, uh, I mean, better? Is it still on the debate? Or, uh... No, it's not debate. It's not a debate because, because there are few peoples. But we think uh, it is, uh, I think it is not only better, it is rigorous. Because if you, usually, if you go to the Einstein frame and mm -hmm. you have scalaron, scalaron is also quantized. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then to, to, to compute the Coleman Weinberg. Yes. So if you look at all the, I did not cite these papers, but if you look at these papers, which means scalaron is a part of gravity. Mm -hmm. So part of the gravity is, is, is uh, quantized there. Mm -hmm. And this is nothing wrong. H however, um, in the Einstein frame, why, why they are doing this? In the Einstein frame, they assume some kind of potential. Mm -hmm. In the Einstein frame, if they start with the, with the, with the Lagrangian, they start, there is no web. Mm -hmm. Scale invariant is, is not broken. So mm -hmm. they go to the, to the uh, Einstein frame, and there is a scalar on and they compute the quantum corrections. Mm. Uh, do, you, do you see? In our case, we already compute the, uh, the Jordan frame and it is not necessarily go to the Einstein frame because, uh, because this uh, CMB observables are frame invariant. Mm. It's not necessary to go to the Einstein frame. We can do it. In principle, we can do it, but we do it because uh, you see it's explicitly slow roll dynamics like potential on these things. In the uh, Jordan frame, you don't see. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> I don't know whether this is an answer for you. <laughs> hmm. And when you talked about the five motivations for yes. then the, uh, what was the, what is the motivation from uh, CMB spectra and the <laughs> yes. yeah. Once again, yeah. okay. 
So this is a, a model, right? This mm -hmm. is a, a, a square inflation yes. model, and this is a, a Higgs inflation model. Yes. And uh, this is a Jordan frame, but if you go to the Einstein frame, you have a potential. Mm -hmm. uh, here in the Jordan frame, you have a potential. This 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 potential is it's not like this. This is just mm -hmm. part of the first potential. This is what I'm saying. This explicit. Uh, you know, solar sort of potential you don't you don't see in the Jordan frame, although these parameters are frame independent. Informational observables are frame independent, but you don't do, do not see the flat potential in the Jordan frame. So to see this, because this is the usual you know argument, flat things. So you go to the Einstein frame. Now, the go to the Einstein frame, the calculator the potential you see this. Mm -hmm. Okay, you see here it's very flat. And the Einstein frame, you have a potential on the nominators and the denominators coming from the while scaling. Mm. On this denominator kills this uh, photo photo force. That's why you have a flat. But you see this only if this is a scaling variant. For instance, you can put uh, the mass parameter. In the case of the Higgs inflation, mass parameter is very small, but suppose the mass parameter is of the order of the Planck scale, right? Mm. Then you do not have this, this flat, flat potential. You have very crazy potential. Mm. So therefore, this uh, scale invariant part plays very important role for this flatness. And this flatness is reflected into the uh, tensor to scalar ratio. If the tensor to scalar ratio is very, very small, then this comes from the flat, uh, the, the, the scale invariant part. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I, I'm said this is not a proof. This is just indications. <laughs> okay. Any other question? Excuse me. Uh, would you? Uh, could you go back to the slide showing the inflaton potential in a yeah. very uh, end, oh. end part? Uh, use this. Yeah. So yeah. is this? Uh, so this is the uh, um, the um, Dirac potential, right? Uh, unlike the Higgs potential. Uh, this is basically the potential here, basically along this line. Ah, so two, yeah, two two scalars, but we assume uh, the inflaton grows down here. So this is the potential. So um, yeah, I, I I was just wondering if if you got a uh, uh, RNS plane in a maybe next slide, and uh, if there's uh, some attractor point when you deform a little bit about the inflaton potential. What you mean deform? Uh, for, for instance, the, are you uh, taking some different value for non-minimal coupling? But this is or, unique. Well, my scale invariance, uh, uh, yes, there's no other choice. I don't know, I have not studied, for instance, to, to improve, uh, introduce mass terms or, par or terms that are uh, not allowed by scale invariance. No, no, I'm not talking about the mass term, but uh, you know, in Higgs inflation case, um, it's known that uh, there's an attractor point. Um, so, uh, you know, all of the uh, Higgs, inf Higgs inflation like models fall into single prediction, which is nothing but uh, Higgs inflation prediction or Stravinsky like inflation model. So, all of those kind of model predicts uh, 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 a value of R of order 10 to minus three and NS is just on a sweet spot of the prank uh, prediction. So, um, so if you, so in, in this model, if you have any similar behavior in a, a, in, a in, in this. Uh, okay, now I think NS. I understand your question. I think let me, I, I show you this picture, right? I think you are asking this. Do you see the picture? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, the background is is a, a famous picture of Planck, and this is our prediction. See, 
Mm -hmm. this, this point, oh, yes. Is a, yes, this is an attractive point. And mm -hmm. also, this is a linear potential. I see, yes. Okay? yes. So we have, yes, we predict this line between the linear potential and the R mm -hmm. square. I see, yes, this is what I was asking. Okay. So this, all right, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I, 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 as I asked earlier, I have a bit technical, you know, questions. So maybe we can discuss after, you know, finishing the, the seminar. Okay. If you, if you, yeah. if you have a time. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other question? Okay, uh, okay, if not, then let's thanks 